Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, everyone. So here we are in Power Hour on Monday, August 16th. We're going to take a look at Fubo today. And uh, Fubo had a great win on earnings, as you see here, accounting for this big gap up from a close of 28.64 to a high the following day of 33.68. So pretty solid uh, gain. But then you see it's come down to basically lose all of the gains that it had from the close the day before. So a couple of things to keep in mind. And uh, just to give you the lay of the land for today, we'll take a look at the chart first, try to get some bearings and see you know, what we may be able to look for in the coming days and, and weeks. And then uh, we'll take a look at the data because there are a few interesting pieces of data that could be important. Now, you know, we see it coming down here, essentially, like I said, retracing all the gains that it had. And uh, it could be sort of double bottoming out here. I know that these wicks, the one today is slightly lower than, than the one that we saw on the 10th of, of August. But, uh, you know, if it's in a general vicinity, it doesn't have to be penny for penny. But to me, this is close enough that if it continues to bounce off of this range, which I don't expect it to fall back down here before market close, um, you know, I would be looking for a bounce coming very, very soon based on that. Or I guess maybe a better way to put it is if it bounces from here, this could be a very good sign for a nice uh, ability to run up. And we'll look for additional indications of that. Now, another indication that I do see of it, if you look at the volume, uh, we'll just pull it up so it's easier to see. Uh, you know, this was the volume on the day where we ran up big time. So 35 and a half million. And then the volume has been quite low since it started to peel back. I mean, this day is, you know, a little bit higher than the three month average. So 11.8 million, the three month average is 10.28 million. So, um, you know, to me, this volume coming down hopefully is a sign, at least hopefully for the bulls, that, uh, that the selling pressure is subsiding and that this is enough profit taking or what have you that has happened. And, um, you know, it'll give itself a bounce off of this area. Now, a couple of other additional indications that we can look at, and then we'll We'll stick it back to some charting in a minute. So we haven't quite hit ourselves a bearish crossover here. And this could be one of those instances where, you know, it comes down and sort of head fakes where it looks like it could be crossing over, but then it continues on its merry way. And the MACD is certainly by no stretch of the imagination, like ex overextended to the above the baseline potential as far as I'm concerned, at least. Uh, now, it could certainly continue to fall through and uh, and do a bearish crossover, and that would bring with it some additional bearish momentum. But I just feel like based on the volume and uh, how much real estate there is still between the MACD and the signal line, this is a good contender for one of these head fakes. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, you see it a little bit head faked here on the bearish momentum where it looked like it was going to die down and cross over and then it actually extended it down a little further. So, uh, you know, sort of like that. I don't know if we had any head fake. Yeah, here's like a head fake on the bullish side where it came down looked like it was going to cross over and then it, you know, made a second run. So that's what I would be potentially looking for, mostly based on this bounce zone and the volume dying down. Now, taking into account some other factors here, the RSI is another good battleground because the RSI has basically situated itself to the mid, uh, the midline here, right about 50. And this is kind of the, the telling point where, as you see previously, if it can't hold it, it just kind of gets perpetually shoved down toward oversold territory. And if it can hold it, like we would have seen up here, you see how it stretched up and then it dipped down um, and it dipped into the high 50s and it made another run and then kept dipping down. It dipped down here into, you know, lower in the 50s, so more toward the mid 50s and was able to make another run. So it never really lost that midline. And here it fought and fought and fought and fought to hold the midline before it gave way to that nice sustained run up. So to me, it's kind of falling down into that same territory. And if it can flatten itself out and at least uh, stabilize here in the midline, or it could, you know, bounce right off, that could give it the potential 
for a run-up in my opinion. Now let's back this out a little bit more so we can see what's going on. This is on the daily chart, so keep that in mind if you are trading anything shorter term. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more focused on, on where the longer term trends are. Um, so we are technically in uh, you know, a bear trend because the 200 is situated above the price act activity. Um, that said, it is sort of coinciding or, or um, encountering this 20 MA at the moment, and that could give it additional bounce potential. So the bounce factors for me are basically it's hitting this double bottoming area, um, and it's sort of uh, conf at confluence level with that 20 MA. So that's another supportive factor and the volume is dying down. So those three factors are pretty solid in terms of, you know, this could be a solid bounce zone. Now, if we look back in previous price activity here and look for where there were several supply and demand zones that met each other, uh, you know, we see this really solid support zone here that was also a resistance zone here and here and previously was a resistance that was flipped to support before that big run up there so that's situated at 2561 so if it does fall through this purple zone you know i would look to that next really solid support level at 2561 um, and i turn these purple because i look for potential bounce scenarios there so for me purple <clears throat> indicates that there's a potential to bounce there um, and then here would be potentially an area where you see uh, support, previous resistance, and if we back this up as well, a bunch of support and resistance right along this line at 28.51. So to me, if it can come back up and make it a run at 28.51 and potentially flip that from resistance to support, that could give it a nice uh, opportunity to lift off and then could look at plotting another couple of price points or price zones. Um, this to me, oh, where are we? Probably right around here. You see this support that led to that run, um, support that lost and then turned to resistance. Um, so this would be the next price zone up as far as I'm concerned, this 31.54. Uh, and then just above that, there's all this topping out, obviously. This is going to be a potentially a, a bit of a sticky zone for its, uh, let's see, I would actually place it a little bit higher to catch this flipping from support to resistance. And then it just kind of got perpetually stuck under there. You see it kind of did this thing where it's that same topping out zone, but ever since this area, the body of the candlestick at least has topped out lower and lower and lower, right? And the body here about aligns with the wick there. So that's the next sort of danger zone as far as I'm concerned for potential topping out. Um, let's see, do we finally get that? Okay, got that there. So I'll be looking for that. That lines up pretty well with that 33.98 zone at this point. Um, but that's, of course, if we can even get this bounce running. Now, there was a couple of other things I wanted to look at before we step away from the chart and go take a quick look at the data. There's um, this most recent run up. So what I wanted to check was potentially if we're at any good retracement levels on the FIB that could also indicate that it has stronger than average potential to bounce here. Um, see, I'll turn this yellow so we can try to see it. Okay, so it came down and settled really solidly in the 50. So that's indicative of that support line. And then <clears throat> where it's coming down back down to now is this 38.2 zone. Um, and so, yeah, that's exactly where we have that purple bounce zone. So that would make a lot of sense. And if we can get that going, I'm going to delete this for now so we can always redraw it back in. What I would look for are potential extension levels because if it lines up that well with the retracement levels, then we could have a nice extension playing out here, which um, would look something like this. Turn these yellow so we can see them. 
So these would be our extension levels up where we would be looking for this bounce to take us to. And um, they're sort of within range, though not super overlapping with the supply and demand zones that we saw, but could be indicative of uh, them being able to roll pretty quickly through those previous resistance zones, which would be nice, of course, for the bulls. But let's see where this leads us. So that 100% retracement, which if it's a true uh, retracement, sorry, if it's a true extension of the FIB, I would look for it to roll to that 100. Now, it may take several weeks to get there. Uh, you know, that's not like an overnight kind of gain, most likely. But that could be a really good opportunity, again, if we bounce on this purple zone, because that aligns with the retracement FIB levels. And so that could say to me, we have a FIB play kind of in, in motion here. But uh, always keep looking for the indications of any of these things as we go through, because things can change on the dime. And we also have sort of macroeconomic forces and market forces coming into play as well as, you know, the market was pushing back earlier today. And still, even though it's kind of moving up today, uh, throughout the day, it had a really, really rough start to the morning and, uh, and overnight hours. So we'll see how that goes. Now, quickly looking at the data, just kind of fill some things in, you know, sort of additional bullish fodder to the extent to which the analysts projections have or targets have any influence on institutional buying, retail buying, you know, they're pointing out this price target of 43.86, which again, isn't so crazy based on that 100% extension level there. And then the other thing, though, is there is a bunch of short pressure still. So nearly 20% estimated short interest percentage of the free float by Ortex today. And that's coming off of uh, free float on loan, almost well over 26.5%. Utilization creeping up very, very high. So getting into a situation where it's going to be harder and harder to find shares to borrow and then short sell into the market. So... Um, you know, this is in the range where like it could bring out short squeeze potential. There's probably also a lot of dark pool activity for uh, Fubo, but I would have to go check that. I didn't pull up the the resources for that for this video, but if you're interested in me taking a look at that in a future video, uh, leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to do that. Um, but you know, the flip side of there being the enough short interest that there's potential for a short squeeze is that the short interest being there is going to create a bunch of selling pressure or perceived selling pressure. And that could sort of dis distort the price enough where it continues to fall. It could create enough sort of skewing in the supply and demand zone of the stock where it continues to get pushed down. But these are the bounce zones that I'm looking at. This one where it's at right now is most interesting to me because like I said, it could put this FIB extension into play. Um, and then if not, I'm going to be looking for that 2561, keeping an eye close on that in, uh, in order for a potential dip buy. But, you know, that's, uh, quite a solid, uh, <laughs> so what, another $2 down. So it's going to be just shy of, of 10% down. Um, so that's, you know, quite a, uh, a, a tragic beating to take after already having peeled off of all of this gain that was seen from a really, really good earnings report. So I'm keeping a close eye on Fubo at the moment and watching out how these trends and these levels play out and especially keeping a strong eye on that midline on the RSI and seeing if the MACD can do a bit of a head fake here because it is situated just above the baseline at the moment. So it's it has you know a lot of potential run room to the upside. And to me, if it only dipped down this far, that bearish momentum isn't really looking like it's wearing its ugly head nearly as like strongly as it was back here. So, and then the last thing just to quickly recap is the MAs. The MA is lining up really well with these zones at the moment. So additional support at this bounce zone from the 20, if it can help hold it. And then these 50 and 200 MAs situated right around this supply and demand zone here. And that could give it additional resistance at first, but then additional lift if it can flip that to support. All right, well, that will do it for this one. I certainly appreciate you watching, and I hope that your trading week is off to a good start. I will see you in the next video.